Okay, let's take a moment and ask the Lord's presence again as we uh, uh, have a study together. Father in heaven, we are so blessed by you. Though this world has been racked with sorrow and pain and the results of sin, there are still uh, flowers amongst the thorns and we have a hope because of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in your promises, we believe in your plan, and we ask for your uh, near presence, your Holy Spirit, to be with us now, to guide us in your word. We praise you and we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. So this is part four uh, of the uh, series in Romans, um, uh, The Path of the Just. This is your path. Because there is no one that will enter the kingdom of God that is not just. We will not walk the streets of gold unless we have been justified for our failures and sins which is because of the blood of Jesus Christ, or made righteous and able to walk those streets of gold in continual holiness and righteousness, which is also done through the power of God in us. The promises of God is what we trust in in order to, to do these things. The path of the just. Let's do a quick review. And let me see if I can get rid of what's on my screen. There we go. I didn't mean to do that. It's, it's taking me through a little... It's reading my words and putting them on the screen. So let's see if I can get out of that. I don't know how I can. There we go. Okay, technical problems, even when you think that you have it completely down. <laughs> okay, a review. Let's look at um, what we looked at so far in Romans 1 to 8. And I summed this up a little bit. It's not the full list, but the gospel is good news. We have, you can say already, we have received grace. The gospel, actually, is the power of God. We, as God's people, are called to holiness. God will render to us according to our deeds, but this is done in the Spirit and not in the letter. We are justified freely by His grace, through faith and in the Spirit. God's love reacts upon us and we become, we become law keepers. This is the gospel, the good news. We, by the power that is in Christ, may once again be law keepers. We are justified by faith and we have peace with God, which gives us access to grace. We can then rejoice in the promise of Christ's likeness. This knowledge of faith and grace, attended by the Holy Spirit, results in a, in a victorious Christian life, alive to Christ and dead to sin. From Romans 6.22, But now, having been set free from sin, and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end, everlasting life. One more slide of review. Remember, the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. We should serve in the newness of the Spirit. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. 
we must choose really to set our minds on things above, things of the Spirit. From Galatians 5.16, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Praise God for all these promises in the book of Romans. Amazing. We look at that book sometimes, I know we have, and, and think it's so daunting. How do you even understand how all that is said here? And, and it's true, it can be confusing at times. But look at all the treasures that have been placed in those words in, that book, in this book that we are studying. So let's go on. In, there's, there's three sections three sections to our study today. We're looking at Romans 9 and 10 in the first section. And I want you to recognize that you are children of promise. We think of, of Isaac, right? But you are children of promise as well. And, and I just realized before I, I, uh, I go to that section, I wanted to mention the concept that's been talked about really throughout today, even I think in, um, in Gail's uh, time, and if I can look up, <laughs> I'm not sure if I can do this right here on the spot, but um, I wanted to look up this uh, text that Gail mentioned, Ezekiel 9 verse 4. Ezekiel 9 verse 4, let me look that up if you can look it up on your Bible. Um, Ezekiel 9 verse 4 and just one second because along with the hymn that we sung earlier and we will be singing and in light of the day that we are living in these studies that we are doing are so crucial for us as, as the people of God. They're, they're crucial for everyone that wants to be safe in this time that we're going through and in the end saved in the kingdom of God. We must remain faithful, obviously. And how do we remain faithful through, through the troubles and turmoils all around us? And sure, certainly the attacks of Satan trying to take us down. Let's look at what this says here in Ezekiel 9 verse 4 that Gail brought out this morning. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city. What really does a city stand for? The, the, the people, just like the New Jerusalem city, is the bride of Christ. But we, as God's people, are the bride of Christ. It's only the bride being in that city that makes it the bride of Christ anyway. But nonetheless, go through the midst of the city. Now what city is that? Through the midst of Jerusalem. This is God's city. And set a mark upon the foreheads. Now look here. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What does it say? Of the men, and that includes women and children, that sigh and cry for the abominations done in the midst thereof. It, now notice it says in the midst thereof even. Do you sigh and cry? over the sins of God's people? Now I'm not talking about putting on t real tears in that sense, but rather, is your heart sorrowful over the fact that there are foolish virgins within the church of God? There are wise virgins, but there are foolish virgins. And at some point, you too may be among the foolish, not waking up and realizing today is the day we need to get close to God now before the crisis comes. If you see somebody in the church haplessly going along, thinking I'll always have time, but they're busy in whatever pursuit, or just not taking it seriously, do you pray for them? Do you sigh and cry over the troubles within God's church? You know there are troubles within God's church. The, these are the people 
that have the heart of Christ and the heart of the Father and the Spirit that are sighing and crying, you see. This is why a mark is set upon them. And, and, and we eventually will have the declaration, let him who is righteous be righteous still. And so I just wanted to bring out that we are in a day that we need to take the messages of God and the warnings of God and the, and the um, is the right word, wooings, the calling of God seriously. Do not delay any longer. Do not delay to connect that Make that connection anew for yourself, but also don't neglect to pray for your children, your grandchildren, your family, your friends, your neighbors, your church members, those that, that you are in contact with and know of. Pray for each other fervently, for the day is approaching quickly. Now, children of promise, let's go on. Let's read this from... Romans 9 verse 1, I tell you the truth in Christ, I am not lying. This is Paul speaking, right? My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed. Who does that sound like? You remember the story of Moses saying, if not, blot my name out of the kingdom, right? The same Spirit, which is the Spirit of Christ, and He did take the penalty on the cross, right? So the same Spirit that was in Christ, here is in Paul, and he is saying, I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen, according to the flesh. Do you sigh and cry that at that level for our brothers and sisters? Or would you rather talk about them behind their back? Is that more fun for us? That's the carnal heart that likes that, by the way. That's not the spiritual heart. The spiritual heart wants to cover, an, cover a wrong and find a way of solution to resolve the problem that they may be in Christ and those that were hurt are still in Christ. Let's pray for each other. Here we go. For it says... My countrymen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, here we could say, who are Seventh-day Adventists? Does your heart hurt for other Seventh-day Adventists, maybe in our church? To whom pertain, listen to the description, the adoption. Are we not adopted children of Abraham? Are we not now the children of Abraham by faith? Yes. Pertain the adoption, the glory. What is the glory? The presence of God, the Shekinah glory then. But do you know that your elder brother is standing in the presence of the living God, his Father, and the Spirit in the holy place, right, most holy place, right now on your behalf, for your righteousness sake? The glory, the adoption, the glory, the covenants. I mentioned in the... In the Sabbath school, that there are many covenants, really, between different people. There was a covenant between God and, Ab and Adam and Eve, between God and Abraham, between... Uh, I, I keep hitting my mic, don't I? I'm going to try to stop that. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not, between Noah and God. Many covenants. But there is a new covenant where God has promised that by our walk of faith... In Christ, as we live by faith, that He will rewrite His character upon your heart. That's what I want. What about you? Do, you? do you want His law, His character, His mind, His mindset, the way He thinks? Do you want that rewritten on the sanctuary, the temple of your mind and heart? I want that. So, the covenants... The giving of the law. We believe in the law. It still exists and is binding. The service of God and the promises. All these apply to us as well. Of whom are the fathers and from whom? According to the flesh, Christ came. This is speaking, of course, of in that time, the Old Testament Hebrew church. But God's church is one from Abel to now. It is still Christ's church. Okay. Christ came, who is over all, 
the eternally blessed God. Amen. What a blessing it is to be children of promise. It was foretold that we would exist. We talk about the fact that there is a last day remnant, don't we? It's a prophecy about those that will keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus and those that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. So, yes, we can have the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus, meaning what we apply that to, is all really a prophecy throughout history. But yes, the, the, the gift of prophecy through Ellen White. But what if we have the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus, but we don't have the faith of Jesus? What if we rely upon our knowledge of Scripture and we keep the Sabbath and we live this way, and we live that way according to the spirit of prophecy. But what if we're not walking by faith in our daily walk? Rather, we're stacking up credits, building our own house, our own mansion in the kingdom of God. You know, that house will fall. It isn't built on the rock. That was a great uh, children's story of building your house on the rock, not on your achievements. Because I'm sure most of you can achieve more than me on your own. I'm a weak, weak person in myself. I rely upon the Lord Jesus Christ alone. What about you? We must not only have the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus, but we must also have the faith of Jesus, and that only comes from Him. Let's go on. Next slide. Romans 9, 6 to 8. Children of promise. But it is not that the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel who are of Israel. You could say, in a sense, Judas was not of Israel. Though he came from the physical line of the Israelites, he rejected his Messiah. Nor are they all children because they are the seed of Abraham, but in Isaac your, your seed shall be called. That is, those who are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted as the seed. So see, yes, we are children of promise. Yes, our church has been foretold in Scripture that it would exist in the last days. But are you going about it as by the letter of the law? Or are you going about it as... It humbling yourself before the living God and seeking His presence that He might work out salvation in you. This is a different way. This is a joyous way of being a Christian. There is nothing to be sad about except when we fail. We can cry before the Lord, I'll tell you. I suggest you do it. I suggest you fall on your face before the Lord in private and you cry out your heart to the Lord. And tell him how sorry you were, you are, that you blew it so poorly, badly. But you are children of promise. And Christ said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Get up, my, my child. Get up. Stand up. I am with you. Yes, you, you, you failed. But I am stronger than sin. I am stronger than Satan. And I am stronger than your carnal nature. I will complete the work that I began in you when I saved you. I will do the work in you. Stand up, my child. You are a member of the household of God. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ to you. Do not let Satan beat you down and make you feel like, oh, God could never forgive me again. It's not true. It's a lie. He will always forgive you when you plead for His forgiveness. All 
always. The problem is with the unpardonable sin, you no longer ask. You no longer want it. You've gone so far into sin that you don't come back and you're not interested anymore. And eventually God says that he's holding in his sin. Leave him alone. Leave him be. I can't, get, I can't reach him. I can't get through to him. He's left me. So move on. Move on to the rest that are living in the day. And God works on them. And s Don't be in that boat. Don't be in that condition where you have hardened your heart and closed your ears. Doesn't Christ talk about how they... Do you remember when they, they stopped their ears and ran at Christ? These are the children, the seed, right, of Abraham. They stomped, stopped their ears and gnashed their teeth and ran at him. I think that's when they were going to throw him off a cliff if they could. If I, if I remember right. Do not be in that group. Humble yourself and he will lift you up. The children of promise are counted as the seed. You are counted as the seed of Abraham and, and get all the promises that God gave to Abraham. Rely on them. Rely, people of God, on the promises of God. Rely on Him. Don't rely on yourself or your strength. Rely on Him. Let's read on. Romans 9, 11, 12. For the children not yet being born nor have, any, have done any good or evil. This is talking about um, Jacob and Esau, I believe. Yes. For the children not yet being born, nor having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand. What does it say? Not of works. This was done before they were even born. Not of works, but of him who calls. It was said to her, the older shall serve the younger. The point is, if God has spoken victory to you in the power of the name of Christ Jesus, it is sure because it is based on His power and not yours. It is based on His promises, not your promises. Let's move on here. So then, it is not of Him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. I'm telling you, this kind of verse used to bother me when I was younger and didn't understand it. I thought, man, it's just random then. It's just random. I have a 50-50 chance of being saved at all. Until I realized that the Lord Jesus Christ is love. Is love. And the Lord Jesus Christ is mercy. And the Lord Jesus Christ is grace and truth and light and life. So, if it is according to God who shows mercy, I'm saved. Satan can try everything he can. Every evil human being on earth can try all they want to take me down. But if I stand in the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm safe. Because it's about His power and not my power. His ability and not my ability. I can rejoice. We said that in an earlier slide in one of the texts. We can rejoice in Christ's likeness. Because though I know that I do not display the likeness of Christ in much of my life, I know I will fully reflect it one day. Because He will complete the work. Because He is faithful. And He wants to do it. And He is willing to do it. And He has promised to do it. You have no fear. Perfect love drives out all fear. If you accept that the Lord Jesus Christ loves you, if you accept that, you will begin to love Him back. And that love relationship will hold you through the time of trouble. It will hold you through COVID-20, COVID-21, COVID-22, COVID-23A, B, and C. <laughs> Whatever's coming. Perfect love drives out fear. 
God will take care of you. There's a song that says that, right? God, I'm not going to try to, I almost did. I almost broke into a, <laughs> to sing that and I'm not going to do it. God will take care of you. It is of God who shows mercy. Let's read on. Romans 9, 22. What if God, wanting to show his wrath and to make his power known, hmm, strange thing to say in a way, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath prepared for destruction, that he may, might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had prepared beforehand for glory. Now, let's just pick that apart. Well, let me finish reading it, then we'll pick it apart. Even us whom he called, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. So that applies to us as well, right? Now, let's stop a second. This is the great controversy theme. What if God, wanting to show his wrath and make his power known, what is his wrath toward really? Well, the scripture does says, say God is angry with the wicked every day. But you know why that is? Because they hurt other people. All sin wounds. You may think that your sin doesn't wound, but it does. Someone, somehow, even at times yourself. What if God wanting to show his wrath? His wrath against evil and sin and darkness, right? And those that attach themselves to it will be destroyed as well, right? But he endures with much long suffering. That's what the great controversy is. The 6,000 years. What has the God of life had to endure? <laughs> I've had a few people die in my life, in my lifetime. I mean, I, as I remind you, of course, my grandparents, and now my mother, and, and my brother in law's brother, and different ones. What has God, the God of love, had to endure watching his creation die over this 6,000 years? It's, it's, it's horrifying. So he endured with much long suffering the vessels that are really going to be destroyed. That he knows. Look, the, God knows the end from the beginning, right? But did that stop him from trying with Cain? Didn't God come to him and say, hey, look, if you do well, you'll, you'll be blessed, right? And then didn't he try? He even tried with Ahab, King Ahab. Ahab? Yes. <laughs> Ahab and Jezebel. He gave great promises to him if he would do what was right, just like the other kings. And yes, even with Judas. He saw where Judas's feet were tending, but he strove with Judas. He endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath prepared for destruction. And why is that? So that you might know the riches of his glory and how good he truly is. That everything that Satan said was a lie. That is not my heart. I want everyone to be saved. So Christ died on that cross so that all men might be saved. All mankind, right? And then he prepared it so that the weak even could be saved. So that it's not by works. It's by faith in the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that even a weak man like me can be saved. So that it might be known to the riches of his glory on the vessels of his mercy, which he had prepared even to us whom he called, not of the Jews, but also of the Gentiles. Let's move on. Romans 9.30. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained to righteousness? Even the righteousness of faith? But Israel pursuing the law of righteousness has not attained to the law of righteousness? Now look at what the problem was. Why? Because they did not seek it by faith. But as it were, by the works of the law. Now you... I know you may think I harp on this, but children of God, there is only one gate to the kingdom. Narrow is the way going through that gate. There is one Savior of the world, one gate that will open up and let you through, and it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Not your own gate that you build yourself, but 
the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one way into the kingdom of God. By faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But it, as we have, we don't throw, the reason I review all that we've learned already is because I don't want us to forget all this love reacts upon us and changes who we are. It actually, literally changes the way your mind thinks and who you are and who you are becoming in Christ. Remember, the path of the just is a shining light that shines more and more under the perfect day. That we are changed as in a mirror from glory to glory, as, unto the, as by the Spirit of the Lord. This is the process, wherever Jim is. He always says it's a process. Everything's a process. Well, the salvation of your soul is a process. Yes, Christ Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. And yet there was a work still to do for your righteousness in the courts above for you. Okay. They didn't attain it. Why did Abraham attain it? Why did Noah attain it? Why did Abel attain it? Why did Seth attain it? Because they did it by faith. They still obeyed. We still keep the Sabbath. We still do what God wants us to do, but now we don't rely upon ourselves any longer. I'm not... It doesn't have to do with whether I can... Cre cre if I can keep the law perfectly, I know I'm going to be sealed. But rather I trust that if I take in my soul the dwelling... If I give my soul for a dwelling of the Lord through the Holy Spirit, He will come in and clean this house and make it acceptable. And then I will live and walk according to the Spirit, but I will not gratify the deeds of the flesh any longer. So the work is still done, but it is done in Christ, through the Spirit, by my opening the door. Yeah, I have to open the door. He won't knock it down. He will gently stand at the door and knock. Wouldn't, wouldn't you like to let me come in? You've tried so long to obey. You failed so many times and you live in sorrow and guilt because of the way you feel all the time. Won't you open the door and let me in? Oh, if you will only let me in, you will be such a happy Christian. Quit relying upon yourself. Lean on me, Christ says. Lean on me. I will put my arm under your arms and I will walk through the battlefield with you together and I will make you reach the other side just cling on to me cling on to me put your arm around my neck walk with me I will see you through I have already been through the minefield I know where the mines are Isn't that what we need to do? Amen. By faith in the name of the all-powerful, almighty name of the God of the universe, your creator, the Lord Jesus Christ. He cannot fail. He's already won the victory for you. And he's already laid out the path before you. You have no need of being taken down by Satan or to be lost. Christ is with you by faith. Let's move on. Next text. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone. Does it offend you that God is willing to let a poor sinner like me in the kingdom? Does that offend you? Because I don't have the education you have or the background. I'm not a fifth generation Adventist. I might be a third or fourth. I'd have to add that up. <laughs> I don't know why. One, two, three. I'm at least third generation. <laughs> that would make um, Elijah, well, my daughter and then Elijah, right? Okay. We, we got a fifth generation there somewhere. The stumbling stone is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only way in the kingdom. 
the only way to salvation. Not because I have the right, what's the term, thoroughbred I'm thinking of, pedigree. That was the word I was trying to think of. Not because I have the right pedigree. I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And what does it say? Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. You want your sins covered so that nobody knows what's really in your heart? I know there's wickedness in your heart, in your carnal heart, because God's Word said it. Do you want that covered? Not only is it covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, but it will be cast into the depth of the sea and it will be blotted out and not a soul in the universe will ever see it again. Oh, when Jesus Christ hands you a new little plaque, we'll call it, made out of probably blue sapphire stone, chiseled out of the side of his throne, and he hands you a, that stone with a new name on it. You and him both will know what that means, that new name. <laughs> I won't know what it means. But through your experience with the Lord Jesus Christ, through the salvation of your soul, through this world, he will give you a new name that only you and him understand. And don't tell me you will not cast yourself at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ and grab on to Him and not let go of Him throughout eternity. That will be your joy. Why would you give that up for some silly, lesser treasure here on earth? Everything here is a lesser treasure. I don't care how big it may seem. Take up your cross and follow Him. That may mean that some things you have to give up that you think is a treasure. Think are a treasure. I don't know if I said that right. <laughs> there may be some things that you have to give up. Look at it as taking up your cross. Lord, I'll follow you. If I have to give this up, I don't understand it fully. But I'm just, I, I don't want anything to hinder me. I just want to know you more. I want to get to know you. I want to understand your heart. I want the change in my life. Whoever believes in Him will not be put to shame. Let's read from Hosea. And it shall come to pass, do you remember the promises of God? Children of promise. And it shall come to pass in the place where it is said to them, You are not my people. That's the Gentiles. That's most all of us. You are not my people. There it shall be said to them, you are the sons of the living God. There's the promise. There are so many promises. Romans 10 verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Remember what this began with, with Paul's outpouring, wishing that his children, I mean his brethren, could be brought to Christ, right? I bear them witness that they have a zeal. Look, you can look at some Seventh-day Adventists, they have a zeal. And I'm not going to name things that they put their all in, you know, all their eggs in one basket, all their... Is there an egg substitute? <laughs> all their... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> all their tofu eggs. There you go. They're scrambled tofu, isn't it? They put all their scrambled tofu in one basket. Okay. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. People of God, nothing you can do in works can make you holy. Only the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart and mind can make you holy. So they, they did it accor not according to knowledge, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness. You need to get to know God's righteousness. You need to get to know the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And perfect love drives out fear, we said. And seeking to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted to the righteousness of God. My friends, there is no longer time to wait. 
I am telling you, if this COVID crisis where they have begun to throw people in jail, begun to find them and, and make them not be able to buy or sell in many ways, if this does not open your eyes as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, I don't know what will. And then the Pope coming out and saying, we need to have a Sabbath rest. We need to have a time for the environment. We are really at the border, well, we're at the border of the Promised Land. We are at the border of the Promised Land right now. Now is the time to submit to Jesus' righteousness. Forget about your own righteousness. Cast yourself at His feet, for He cares for you, Scripture says. Cast yourself at His feet. Tell Him that you cannot make it without Him. You cannot do it without Him. But in Him you trust, and you know that He will see you through. Now is the time to submit to God, Christ's righteousness that He wants to work out in you. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Do you believe the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you believe that simply by me confessing with my mouth and saying, Lord Jesus, I believe you. I believe in your promise. And I believe that your Father called you from that tomb and I believe that you live today in the sanctuary above for me. Do you believe that because of that I'll be saved? Because of that I'll be saved. Not because I paid my tithe today. Not because I kept the Sabbath today. Rather, I pay my tithe, which is not my money anyway, and I keep the Sabbath because God made it and made it holy and He made it for me anyway. I do it because He lives in me, not in order to be saved. It is because of His promises that I am saved. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God is actually able to do the work in you? Or is your faith so weak that you cannot even see how He could do it? I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you as one that has walked this walk, at least thus far, that He will walk with you and your faith will grow to where you are immovable because your house is on the rock. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. How does righteousness happen? With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. What is it unto? We are called unto holiness. We are called unto righteousness. How does it happen? With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. See, if you accept by faith the word of the one who created the earth, created the sky, created the sun, moon, and stars, you believe his name is that powerful. You know when he says, I will never leave you or forsake you, and that it is in Christ that you are preserved you know it will happen and that it, it, it will be. You will be saved if you cling to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care what anybody tells you when they try to lay their rules on you. Go to the Word of God for the rules of life. But recognize that it is an outgrowth of being connected to the vine that you do good works. But those good works will come if you are connected to the vine. You will keep the Sabbath. You will keep the Ten Commandments. You will obey what God teaches you to obey in His Word. But it is not to be saved. Salvation comes because you believe in the words of Jesus Christ. Am I making this clear? I hope I am. Romans 10. I realize, by the way, there's three parts to this sermon. Don't get worried. 
I think this is going to be part one, is going to be <laughs> section one, because we're not going to move on to section two and three this time. We'll wait till the next message. The pastor prophesied. I didn't know our pastor was a prophet, but when I said to him, I, I believe the Lord wants me to give a five-part series on Romans, he said, well, six or seven parts is good too, or something like that. <laughs> so thank you, prophet, but... <laughs> Romans 10, 11 to 13. For the scripture says, Who be Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is what? Rich to all who do what? Call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, do you know why we as Adventists are worried about that text? Because of the cheap grace concept out there in the fallen churches, in the fallen, fallen apostate Protestantism. Oh, I don't have to do anything. I just believe. Right? That's why we're so nervous about a text like that. But that doesn't change the fact that you cannot live righteously. I don't care how well you think you keep the Sabbath. You can't do it. Because your heart is evil without Christ. But in Christ, you are set aside for us. Holy use. And He will dwell in you, right? He, where are we? Um... Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Isn't that interesting? Obeyed the gospel. That makes me think that what I've been saying, this is, re is relating to. In other words, by God's dictate, the receiving of the gospel will bring obedience in your life. It's an outgrowth of being grafted in the vine. The fruit comes. By the way, the fruit doesn't come immediately. Have you ever planted anything? Right now, Elijah, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, thought when we planted our pumpkins together in our, in our garden, that pumpkins were going to actually come up. I mean, the pumpkin was going to come up. I told him by next Sabbath, when you come out here, you'll see the pumpkins are coming, or something. And, and I think he said something to his mom that he thought the actual pumpkin was going to come up. <laughs> That's us Christians. We think the second we're grafted in the vine, all good fruit ought to be growing on our boughs. You know, we should be laden down with good fruit. You know, it takes time to change you from being an evil woman to being a godly woman. It takes God time to take you from being an evil man to being a godly man. But He is with you through it and you already have salvation because He's not going to let go of you. He is going to see the project through to completion. So then, well, Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed? So then, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Build your faith. Be in the Word of God, which is Christ. Isaiah 65, we're, this is the last slide, by the way. This is the last slide. Let's read this, and then we'll close. Isaiah 65, 2. I didn't really want to end on this slide, <laughs> because it's, I, want, I always like to end on the positive note of what God is doing. But let's just read this, because it's part of my presentation. We were going to move on. I'll show you the slide of the next section, and then we'll, we'll move on. We'll be done. I have, stretch, I have stretched out my hands, God is saying, all day long to a rebellious people, who walk in a way that is not good, according to their own thoughts. There's a scripture that says, everyone does what is right in their own eyes. That is true, even within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. People will walk according to what they believe, whether it's held up by scripture or not. Whether it's extremism, uh, what do we want to call it, legalism, on one side, on one ditch, or whether it's lawlessness on the other, I don't have to obey, or whatever it is, who walk in a way that is not good according to their own thoughts. But see, 
like Christ said, I have a better hope for you. Because you have heard the call, folks. I just want to stop here. I believe that the Holy Spirit have att has attended these messages. I'll tell you right now, it is not Greg Reese that has stood up here and delivered these messages to you. It is the Holy Spirit of the living God that has delivered these messages to you. You have been pulled upon, your heart strings have been pulled upon by the everlasting, almighty, eternal God that fashioned your very soul. So I have better hope for you because you have heard the message. You have heard the heart of God in these texts. You have heard the love of God calling upon you. Don't worry about the person next to you. Have you heard the call of God? Now, yield your heart to Him that He may complete the work that He began in you when He saved you. Yield your heart to Him, for you will be saved in Jesus Christ. Let me just show you this slide, what's coming up. A remnant, hmm, according to the election of grace. That'll be next time in a month or so uh, when we meet again on this. Let's pray. Father in heaven, We love you. We are so happy that you are such a God as you have proven to the universe over this great controversy time. We're so happy that the accusations of Satan are not true. That you want nothing more than to bury our sins in the depths of the sea that you might pick us up again and recreate us in, in your image and that we again may taste of the nature, the divine nature that you have, the heart of God, that we might be like you once again through the power of the indwelling Spirit and of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for hearing us. We thank you for blessing us. In the name of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. God bless you.